Hi and welcome back to Doc Off Call. My name is Maddie and I'm a doctor working in the UK. Today we're going to be looking at the anime Gintama and specifically we're going to be looking at the episode where he's suffering from Kaneshibari or sleep paralysis. And today I'll be giving you a breakdown of what it is, why it happens, what people typically experience and how we can treat it. So if you like this video please give us a like and why not come over to our channel where I break down videos like this every week. So I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly but kanashibari is a Japanese word made up of two words, the first of which is kana which means metal and shibari which means to bind. Now when you combine these two words it comes up with kanashibari which means to immobilize as if bound by metal chains. Now that sounds like a particular anime character which I'm really fond of. Now in English we call this sleep paralysis. Let's have a look. So, why does this happen? Well, when we dream, our brain switches off our body so that we don't injure ourselves when acting out our dreams. And when we wake back up, the body switches back on. And basically, what can happen is sometimes this switch mechanism can be out of sync and we can actually wake up paralyzed. Now, this can occur when falling asleep, it can happen in the middle of the night, or it can happen when waking up from sleep. Now when people experience this, they have some level of consciousness. Um, they can, for example, move their eyes and look around the room, but their body is paralyzed. Now, this is often a terrifying experience for the people that do have episodes of this, not only because of the paralysis, but because of the possible hallucinations that can come alongside it. <laughs> now, the association of sleep paralysis with spirits or ghosts or demons is common across many different cultures. The most commonly reported story is that of the old hag. And people often describe this experience of an ugly old woman dressed in white who comes and sits at the end of the bed making eerie sounds. Now, the way I imagine this is like one of those characters from the Ring movies who's uh, got her hair covering her face and making sort of haunting sounds. <laughs> I like how he's trying to convince himself that this isn't happening um, when in fact sleep paralysis is far more common than people think. It's approximated that at least one in ten people will have at least one episode of sleep paralysis in their life. Now, some people can be unfortunate enough to have multiple episodes of this, and it has been linked to other sleep disorders as well as other psychiatric illnesses. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he's screaming out for Kagura to come and save him. Um, and that latter part, he's actually beginning to describe some of the common hallucinations that people experience with sleep paralysis. And there's typically three. The first of which is the perception of an intruder or an evil spirit within your room and someone who is approaching your body. The second is that of incubus, which is the feeling of someone either choking you or sitting on your chest, and people often describe a tightness in the chest or a difficulty with breathing. And then finally you have the vestibular motor hallucinations, which can give rise to symptoms of feeling like you're levitating or having an out-of-body experience. Some people even describe the feeling of being taken to a completely different location altogether. 
Now, if you put all three of these hallucinations together, it sounds like an abduction or a UFO story. In fact, sleep paralysis is thought to account for many a story of nighttime visitations. Whereas in the past, people accounted this to demons, spirits, or ghosts. In the 20th century, with our technological advancements, it's thought that some people interpret these sensations as though it's an alien abduction. Oh gosh, and this is why I love Gintama and why it's one of the most popular anime. It's so well written. Um, I love how he's sort of chopping and changing between whether he believes in ghosts and, and now he's wanting to believe in them to help him out of this situation. Uh... Some risk factors that can leave you susceptible for having an episode of sleep paralysis are things like too much alcohol or being sleep deprived. This is often why it's described by people who've travelled on a long haul flight where those two factors can be at play. Other things that could leave you susceptible are other psychiatric conditions and things like anxiety disorders, other sleep disorders or things like PTSD can also lead you to being susceptible. Okay, so I mean, he's been really unlucky there in that his episode has gone on for the whole night. Now, it's important to say that most uh, episodes of sleep paralysis tend to last for a matter of minutes rather than hours, and they tend to resolve by themselves. However, some people can be troubled by recurrent episodes of sleep paralysis, and in fact, it can be so distressing for them that you get people who avoid sleep altogether, which can, as we know already, perpetuate the problem. <laughs> so, should you wake someone up from an episode of sleep paralysis? Well, there's no definitive answer to this, and all the evidence comes from patients' anecdotes. And the collective message is that what people prefer is to have someone next to them to gently reassure them when they're having an episode and when they come round to help de-escalate their anxiety that what they saw was in fact not real. But what are the treatments for sleep paralysis? Well, we looked at risk factors early on, so excess alcohol and being sleep deprived, and the first things we would advise is trying to avoid too much alcohol before bed and to have good nighttime sleep routines. And I'll leave a link down below for some good sleep hygiene advice. Now, if it's related to an underlying mental health condition that, you're, that you feel you're suffering from, it would be really important for you to go and have a chat with your GP who can look at arranging treatment. Okay, I hope you found today's video useful and enjoyable. If you did, please give us a like and consider subscribing down below. I really love putting videos out like this. I enjoy anime and I enjoy teaching. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, you might want to watch one of these two videos. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.